In this video, we'll take a look at a piece of vintage Heathkit test equipment, the IG5282 audio generator. I'll discuss the history and features of the instrument, and we'll look at the front panel controls and inside circuitry. I'll discuss the restoration of this particular unit and say something about the circuit design it used. We'll see a demonstration of the generator in operation and then wrap things up with a summary. Heathkit was a manufacturer of electronics in kit form. Their product line included amateur radio, test equipment, and various consumer products. By building a piece of electronics, you could save money and gain the satisfaction of having assembled it yourself. A signal generator is a device that produces repetitive signals which are useful for various types of testing of electronic devices. They're often classified as audio signal generators which produce output over the audible range of frequencies and radio frequency or RF signal generators which generate signals at radio frequencies. Signal generators can produce different signal waveforms, the most common being sine, square, ramp and triangle waves with some generators able to produce arbitrary waveforms that are programmable by the user. The Heathkit IG5282 is an audio sine square generator. It's useful for testing radio and audio electronics. It can produce both sine and square waves over the range of 10 Hz to 100 kHz. Like most Heathkit products, it was sold as a kit that was assembled by the user. It was made from 1977 to 1991 and typically sold for US $49.95. It was part of the 5280 series of low-cost test instruments. The series also included the IG5280 RF oscillator, IB5281 RLC bridge, IT5283 signal tracer, IM5284 multimeter, and the IPA5280-1 power supply. I also own the RF oscillator, RLC bridge, and power supply, and have made separate YouTube videos about them. The Heathkit IG5282 audio generator can produce sine and square waves from 10 Hz to 100 kHz. The sine and square wave outputs are individually adjustable from 0 to about 3 volts RMS. Frequency is selected using a variable control which is marked from 10 to 100 and a range switch which offers ranges of times 1, times 10, times 100 and times 1000 Hz. The sine and square wave frequencies are identical and the level of each is independently adjustable. Both signals may be used either independently or simultaneously. The unit can be powered from two 9-volt batteries or the optional IPA5280-1 power supply. Specifications for distortion, rise time, or frequency accuracy were not specified by Heathkit. The unit uses the blue plastic case which was common to all the instruments in the 5280 series. The case has built-in feet which also allowed multiple units in the series to be stacked. The rear panel has a connector for the external power supply and a switch to select internal battery or external power. This panel was part of the power supply kit and if the user did not opt to purchase the power supply, a plastic filler plate was provided to cover the opening. At the top rear is a built-in handle and an opening for storage of the test leads. The front panel has the following controls. The frequency selector dial a four position range switch, banana style connectors for the sine wave output, sine wave output amplitude control, on off switch for the sine wave output, on off switch for the square wave output, square wave output amplitude control, and banana style connectors for the square wave output. The unit came with a set of test leads with banana jacks and alligator clips. Circuitry is contained on one printed circuit board, as well as some point-to-point -point wiring to the controls. The PCB is mounted on a metal chassis, which in turn connects to the bottom half of the case. The chassis and front panel can be removed by the removal of two screws. There's a metal shield which covers most of the bottom of the PCB.
There are clips and holders for the two 9 volt batteries when the unit's running on battery power. When using an external power supply, the battery clips can be snapped to the bottom of the case to avoid having them short to the internal circuitry. The calibration procedure mentions an upper metal shield. This unit does not have any such shield. I don't have a full manual, so I can't confirm what it looked like or if it existed. The few pictures I found on the internet of the inside of these units are like mine and do not have any shield. My suspicion is that the shield may have been used on early units and later discontinued. If anyone has more information about this, I'd be interested in hearing it. The unit is solid state using seven transistors, two of which are field effect transistors. The oscillator uses a differential amplifier oscillator where the frequency is controlled by a notch filter with values determined by the frequency control and range switch settings. The square wave section uses the same oscillator followed by a Schmidt trigger, amplifier and emitter follower. There's one trimmer cap and three trimmer potentiometers which need to be adjusted during calibration. Calibration requires a voltmeter and optionally an oscilloscope. I purchased this unit on eBay in April of 2015. It didn't come with a manual and the seller didn't know if it was working. It came with test leads and was also in the original Heathkit shipping box with the warranty registration card. Opening it up, it looked clean inside. I initially powered it up using batteries and it produced proper sine and square wave output. I was able to find a schematic and calibration instructions on the internet, but not a full manual. Manuals are available from purchase from several sources, including Data Professionals, which, as I write this, was just recently acquired by the newly resurrected Heathkit company. Restoration just consisted of some basic cleaning. A few screws were either missing or the wrong size and were replaced. I went through the calibration procedure using a voltmeter and oscilloscope. This is the procedure that mentions the non-existent upper metal shield and instructs how to adjust the output level so that it's correct after the shield is installed and covers the trimmers. After calibration, the output level was a little more consistent across the dial and the square wave output had a proper 50% duty cycle. By the way, if you obtain one of these instruments and it's missing the power supply connector, or if you want to connect it to your own power supply, suitable connectors are still available. They're .093 inch three circuit Molex connectors and are available from a number of sources including Fry's and Mouser. I attained these from a local radio supply company. Let's take a brief look at the unit in operation. I've connected the sine and square wave outputs of each channel to a dual channel oscilloscope. The sine wave power switch must be in the on position to get sine wave output. The frequency set by the range switch and the frequency dial. The crude markings on the dial mean that the frequency cannot be set particularly accurately. The sine wave output level is controlled by the amplitude switch and goes up to about 3 volts RMS. Similarly, the square wave output requires that its power switch be on. Because the square wave output is derived from the sine wave, you must also have the sine wave power switch on when using the square wave output. The square wave frequency is also set by the frequency dial and range switch, and amplitude is set independently here. Maximum output is about 3 volts peak to peak. The outputs are DC coupled, so presumably the unit cannot handle being connected to any significant voltages. In such cases, a DC blocking capacitor could be placed in series between the unit and the circuit under test. As well as seeing the waveform on the scope, we can connect it to this small powered speaker and hear it. Here we're listening to about 600 hertz. The sine and square wave outputs have noticeably different sound characteristics.
Compared to, say, the Heathkit IG-18 audio generator, the IG-5282 was a more basic instrument with fewer features, but it was also lower cost, selling for under $50 when many audio generators sold for twice or more than that. This is the third instrument of the 5280 series that I own. I'm still searching for the signal tracer and multimeter in order to complete the series. They do come up from time to time on eBay. You can learn more about signal generators and other test equipment in my book Classic Heathkit Electronic Test Equipment. The book covers Heathkit's test equipment products starting with a brief history of Heathkit, an overview of the test equipment product lines, and tips on buying and restoring vintage test equipment from sources like eBay. Separate chapters cover the major categories of test equipment, and each chapter includes one or more in-depth sections that looks at a representative model from that category. The book is available from lulu.com and Amazon and retails for US $19.95. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, check out my other YouTube videos on vintage radio and test equipment.